Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yashik Singh, and I am from the Department of Telehealth at the Nelson R. Mandela School of Medicine in South Africa. This presentation is going to uh, give you a brief description of what bioinformatics is. Um, we're going to speak about why bioinformatics is important, give you some examples of uh, bioinformatics applications, and we're going to specifically look at some sequencing tools and some uses of sequencing. Before we start with the bioinf bioinformatics lecture proper, it's important for us to know some background information. Uh, a very important point for us to realize is that uh, bases are the building blocks of all organic matter. So bases combine with each other to form DNA. The four different bases that are actually used when creating DNA are adenine, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And these are shown in the bottom right hand corner of this slide. These bases join to a pentose ring via a glycosidic bond and creates what is called a nucleoside. The nucleoside then combines with either one, two, or three uh, phosphates and are called nucleotides. You get a nucleotide monophosphate if one phosphate group is joined to this pentose ring and base. If two phosphates are joined, it's called the nucleotide diphosphate. And if three are joined, it's called a triphosphate. So in order to better explain how this um, base is combined with each other to form the helix of the DNA, please watch this first video. So from this video, we realize that the bases combine in a certain specific way, in a certain order, to create DNA. Uh, DNA is then converted to RNA, and then from RNA to proteins. And proteins are really a, a whole group of amino acids linked together. Uh, each triplet of uh, the, um, the bases so you see here TTT, TC, TTC, TTA, TTG. Each triplet actually codes for a particular amino acid. There are 22 amino acids. 20 of these are encoded using these uh, triplet RNA nucleotides. Um, eight of these uh, amino acids are essential amino acids, which means that the body cannot create these amino acids themselves, it has to be ingested with diet. So uh, from, from this 20 amino acids, if you look at an example, TTT, when, when joined together, actually creates the amino acid phenylalanine. But sometimes things go wrong. Mutations occur. When bases don't interact with each other correctly, it forms changes in the amino acids. And changes in the amino acids can result in changes in the proteins and the way we see things. These mutations can either be inherited, uh, for, in for instance diseases like sickle cell disease or um, cystic fibrosis, some cancers, or they can be acquired for instance, there are some birth defects due to uh, radiation, uh, leukemia, HIV resistance. These are all acquired changes in the DNA, which results in different diseases and different um, um, uh, and, and different uh, types of sicknesses. So now that we know why uh, the genome, why the DNA, why bases, why amino acids are so important, we realize that the study of this is actually uh, valuable and that's where bioinformatics comes in. Bioinformatics is an applied science and that means that it takes uh, the knowledge of different fields and puts it together to solve some sort of problem. Um, if we had to try and find a single definition of bioinformatics, we might think of something that states that bioinformatics is an applied science 
that uses domains like applied mathematics, informatics, statistics, computer science, artificial intelligence, chemistry, biochemistry, etc. to solve problems at the molecular level. And this is what differs bioinformatics from the other informatics fields or sub-disciplines in medical informatics. Bioinformatics deals with problems at the molecular level. So things like genes, like the amino acids we spoke about, like how mutations in the DNA cause different types of diseases, how can these mutations be identified, how can they be prevented, how can they be even reversed. So there are many different areas of bioinformatics and googling them you would find um, that there are thousands and thousands of websites and web pages actually describing different uses or different aspects of bioinformatics and this is mainly because it's such an applied field um, you get sequence alignment gene finding genome assembly protein structure alignment protein structure prediction uh, predict products of gene expression protein protein interactions and modeling of evolution of these um, the three most important or the three most um, um, highly researched fields are sequence alignment uh, predicting products of gene expression and modeling of evolution and in this lecture we're going to speak mainly about sequence alignment uh, predicting the products of gene expression is absolutely vital and this field deals with trying to predict how these bases would interact with each other to actually produce the DNA uh, how amino acids interact with, with, with each other to actually produce the protein the shape of the protein for instance modeling of evolution is basically trying to create an environment that you can control um, electronically and you can see how how different drugs for instance react um, as the environment is changed you can see how for instance HIV drug uh, resistant samples blood samples of patients would react to certain drugs in a um, in a computer using a computer science program instead of injecting uh, these drugs through them and then testing so it's actually just modeling evolution, how things change over time. So sequence analysis, in the most simplest sense, is taking two sequences that we spoke about before, either amino acid, nucleotides, nucleosides, just any two sequences, and actually trying to align them so that there is maximum overlap. You are trying to see how close two sequences are together and there are many uses of why you'd want to do this for instance if there is a new virus um, that, that, that is plaguing mankind and you're unsure of how to start off uh, creating an antiviral for this you can compare the sequence the DNA of this virus to a database of viruses and then find the one that is most close to this new virus and use the antivirals for that virus in the database as a start to actually finding the new antiviral. Uh, sequence alignment has been used to um, determine the type of HIV you have. There are some studies that show that the type of HIV that you have actually um, actually um, the type of HIV you have actually affects the way in which you respond to treatment HIV treatment um, by sequencing you can actually find out how close you are to other species um, and that's probably one of the reasons why um, we can do things like uh, take a heart from a pig and put it into a human body because we know from the DNA how close we are to the pig um, searching genes. Now with searching genes when we are trying to align them together there's a specific algorithm that is used. It's not as simple as just uh, putting two sequences over each other and trying to see which letters overlap. We have to look at all possible combinations in aligning them and also take into account that 
insertions and deletions may also occur in the sequence. One algorithm that is used for this and probably the most common one is the BLAST algorithm and in the demonstration we are actually going to use the BLAST algorithm to show you how this works. So the first demonstration is the demonstration on finding the subtype of HIV. Um, in this demonstration I take an unknown um, subtype uh, sequence I put the sequence into a, a program in BioAfrica. This program takes a sequence, it compares it against its database and sees what type of subtype that is. Um, the second uh, part of the demonstration is Stanford's HIV DB uh, website where I show you how uh, mutations in the DNA is actually used to determine what drugs a patient will be resistant to in HIV therapy. Uh, the next, uh, this, the other half of this video is actually trying to show you another use of uh, sequence alignment and that is proving to you uh, almost a theory of evolution, showing you how close we are to the chimp. So I take two sequences, I take the sequence of the um, chimp and I take the sequence of the human and I compare them together using the BLAST algorithm and I show you how similar they are together so please watch the video called video 2 now so we all know that sequence information is now vital in, in medicine especially now that we are moving towards personalized medicine where medicine is not going to be a, a list of symptoms that you are asked and then you are given general medication for that. Um, in, in years to come you will find that medicine is going to become individualized where a sample of your blood is going to be taken, your DNA is going to be um, sequenced or parts of your DNA will be sequenced uh, and that will be used to determine uh, best medication for you, especially in chronic disease. Um, so this use of bioinformatics, the use of genome information will actually result in new diagnostic and prognostic information. But there are two important things for us to actually consider. One is that genome data is very large and when we are creating electronic medical record systems, we have to take this into consideration. We have to build the systems in such a way that we ensure that different parts of this data can be accessed easily by different programs that need it. But more importantly, we need to start thinking about the ethical and security considerations of having and using genomes. Imagine if a medical aid company or an insurance company gets a hold of your genome somehow and they can now predict what drugs you are going to or what drugs you'll be resistant to in the future they can now predict what diseases you are going to have in the future what are the likelihood of those diseases um, going to be and is it ethical for them to use this information uh, and, did, and increase your medical aid subscription or increase your life insurance subscription or not give you medical aid or life insurance. Um, also, if a doctor uses this algorithm and, and, and realizes that in the future you may have some sort of incurable degenerative disease, should he tell you? Um, if it's, if there's, if if, it's, if he just uses the algorithm to actually determine that you are going to have this disease, there is in fact no guarantee that you will. There is a chance, and depending on how good the algorithm is, there may be a good chance. But does that mean that he has to tell you that you, that you will suffer from this disease? What happens if you take this badly and commit suicide or, or do, do other irresponsible things? So there are many ethical considerations and also design considerations when you are thinking about use of this type of tools 
in uh, clinical informatics. Thank you very much for your time.